Hey, what's up, guys? What'd you hit there? Nothing. All right, guys, looks like we're live. What's up, Chris? Appreciate that for the donation. All right, we're going to jump right into it. Um, today, we're going to be doing some water droplets. I'll go ahead and zoom into there so you can see what we're going to be doing. All right, if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, we've taken this fender and a couple of the other parts, uh, the rear fender and the, the tank, kind of done lives all the way through the whole process. So this is a shattered glass, limelight shattered glass that we're using here. And uh, that's been buried under about uh, right now it's under about 10 coats of clear. It's been sanded a couple of times. It does have a silver leaf that's been inch and turned. This thing's still going to get some more attention around those edges. We're going to run a pinstripe. I haven't decided on the color yet. But anyways, today we're going to be laying out lace just like this on the other side of this fender. And then we're going to be doing this water droplet effect. Now this hasn't been clear coated. So once this is clear coated, you'll really, this will really pop. You'll really be able to tell, but right now it's just a satin, uh, the base coat. But yeah, let's see what this iPhone 13 can really do here. How close can this get? But by, by laying down some water, water droplets and airbrushing, paint really lightly over those drops and letting them letting the uh the water evaporate it creates this cool effect it basically still looks like it's wet and like i said once it's clear it'll look way better i mean it's night and day difference but today we're going to do like i said we're going to do the lace there and we're going to do that water droplet effect we also have a video that i'll show you of um i did a, a water droplet video i think last year we're going to replay that it was done on a black base so you'll kind of see the difference between how this is done on uh, a metal flaked or uh, in this instance uh, is shattered glass um, you'll see some of the differences of how you spray and how you mix the paint um, for each application because it is different but uh, we're going to jump right into it i do have a couple of cameras set up so you'll be able to see how we're mixing up the paint um if you're on amazon you'll be able to see uh all everything that we use we just, you should be able to see a cart down there that's that says everything that uh, i've used in this video if you're not on amazon and you're on youtube or some other platform there'll be the amazon link down in the description in on the youtube uh, on my youtube uh anyways you know what i'm saying but the, go to youtube you'll find it there in the description All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up the paint for this because we're going to want to have that all ready and ready to go. So you want to click that over to the... All right. You got that? Here we go. Okay, these cups come in really handy. I also have these stir sticks they're available on limeline but super handy to have those some of the paint that we're going to be using that i'll go over is the jet black base coat and that's just a 1k base coat um, and that's mixed uh basically a one-to-one -one with a urethane reducer so we'll go ahead and start with that And 
And then I'm going to use some medium reducer. You can use fast reducer, slow reducer, whatever you got. But uh, that's the same thing I have in this little ketchup bottle here. So we're going to reduce that, like I said, about 50%. If you guys have any questions so far, just shout them out. We'll uh, have Ashley here. She's going to read them back to me. And But, yeah, let's hear it. Any questions? So I do have some, we can see this, some Tamico uh, Clear Base Coat, also known as Intercoat Clear. So what we're going to do with this, we're just going to pour, I don't know, about half an ounce out or an ounce or so, how much ever we think we need. And we're going to mix that roughly about 50 50 with the black mixture that i already have right here so i'll be using both of these mixtures mostly this one right here so so what i'm doing is i'm just like i did the other day in the other lives is um i'm using the clear base coat to make the black more transparent so uh, it takes more, it's going to take more paint to create the same effect and to get coverage. So that's going to make the blend a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. It almost kind of gives it a, a bronze kind of tint if it's applied really light. It's, it's kind of cool. Reduce this just a little bit more. Okay. So we got it mixed up. You can't really tell a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this. I'm going to mark this cup R for reduced. That way I'm not, I'm not going to use the wrong paint when it comes to spraying. Okay, that's the paint I'm going to go ahead and load up right now. What up, Dutch? And Chris asked, Adam, are you doing any classes in 2022? I can fly anywhere. Uh, classes in 2022. That's interesting. I don't know. I hopefully I do, but uh, I'm definitely going to be here doing them. I feel like I can make more of an impact here on YouTube than I can in person. I can reach a lot more people. All right. So I do have the Iwata Eclipse HPCS with a 1.35 tip in it. I guess you know, it really don't matter, but you know, pretty much. For what we're doing, a lot of airbrushes will work. So if you have something, and as long as it's clean and it's halfway decent, you're going to be fine. So I'm going to spray this on this, this cup right here. And we can kind of see how smooth How smooth the blend is right there. It looks pretty good. I might give it a couple of extra drops of reducer just to make sure that everything's blending out good. We're going to be spraying at a lower PSI as well because we're going to be spraying at the water droplets and we really don't want to disturb them. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind is we're going to want to over reduce our paint a little bit, but it seems like we're good right there. That's looking pretty good. We're going to go with that. Jordan asked, Hey Adam, do you clear coat under the fender every time you clear coat? I don't, um, I clear coat the edges and I do clear coat under the fender. I don't necessarily like get all crazy with it as long as it's coated i feel like it's good enough um it kind of does depend on on if it's a stock harley job or this one has an e-coat underneath it because i think this is a clockworks fender um and so yeah so i blend up underneath those fenders if they're not they're coated with something to, to keep them protected that's for sure So if you're going to do a white base, then you probably want to use white primer or gray primer if you don't have white. But yeah, gray would be fine. That's what I would do. Light gray. But if you have white primer or you have the opportunity to do that, that's 
that's probably what I would do. Okay, let me flip this over the other way. I'm going to try to get you guys right in here. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, I have just a regular spray bottle here. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can uh, put it in a like a ketchup bottle, like I had my reducer in over there. Uh, you can poke a hole in a water bottle. You can do a lot of different things. I like the fact of spraying it out, and I'll show you why here in a second. Um, but uh, that's that's how I do it. So you don't need much. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here though. Uh, let's see. We are gonna need to mask it off. Let's do that real quick. So I have some eighth inch lime line here. Oh, it's Darling just sent me tiny dog. Who who was it? Starling. Starling. Man, thank you. Appreciate it. Daryl? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, man. I'm taping this up in the wrong spot. Let's try this again. So, like in the past lives, I kind of said this, since we've edged this in a black base coat, I don't necessarily need to match up this line exactly. I just need to make sure it's not crossing into the silver pinstripe. There we go. So I got that edged out. That's going to give it a nice clean edge. Once again, if you were with me the other day, I am out of inch and a half masking tape. So I am just stuck using this three quarter still, but we're going to make it work. And also that image quality should be better too. We should be streaming in 1140. What is it? 1180 or something like that. Craig? Frank. Frank. Oh man, Frank hooked it up. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. God, it, may, it just makes these lives really worth, worth doing. I'm glad I can make an impact. I'm here for you guys too. If you have, if you have questions, let, shoot, let's hear it, man. I'll let you know what I know. I am kind of taking a little bit of the tack off by hitting this up against my sweater and pulling a little bit of the lint off. I don't want the full the full uh, stickiness of this tape sticking on top of my leaf right there. All 
All right. Okay. So we're masked off. I'm gonna put a little more right here just to be safe. All right. Looking good. Okay, there was one thing that I forgot. I do need to mix up some regular clear base coat. Um, we're gonna do that right now and I'll show you why. All right, so we're just gonna get a new cup. I'm gonna go back to the Tamco clear base coat, the inner coat binder clear. So it's just a fancy word for a clear base coat. It acts just like a base coat. So we're gonna take a little bit of that, pour it in there and we're gonna reduce it the same way with this medium reducer. Someone asked, how long does a gallon of black usually last? So a gallon of black would last a really long time if you're just painting motorcycles. Um, if you're just airbrushing, it's going to last you probably longer than what it'll stay good for. Uh, so if you plan on painting a few bikes, two or three or four, buy a gallon. If you plan on just painting your bike or maybe one or two, I, I think you'd get away with the quart. And you can also get that on Amazon as well. Okay, so I have this mixed up and reduced, and it's just a clear base coat. There's no color to it, but it's the same thing as what the black would be or the Speedo Coat Y, any kind of base coat, but it's clear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dump this mixture that I have of my reduced black because I did forgot this. I forgot this step uh, earlier this morning when I did that other side. But uh, I'm going to load up just the clear base coat. James asked, when spinning leaf on an existing paint job, do I need to clear the whole panel or is, it, or is there anything to just seal the leaf? Um, you're, it depends on the way you want to do it. I always clear the whole part and then sand it down every time. But yeah, there probably is a way. I don't know what you're really trying to do with the leaf is you're trying to get rid of the edge of the leaf. So by adding it just to the leaf, you're just going to create a bigger edge. And if you're going to pinstripe it, that's fine. Um, I'm not a traditional pinstripe artist, so I rely on other techniques. And you'll probably see that later on when I get farther in these parts. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's a good question. Not the way I do it. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of lay out this clear base coat. On, on top of this section that we're working on. And the reason why I'm gonna be doing this is because this is just sanded clear right now. This is sanded clear coat, sanded with 600 grit. When the paint lays on that, it kinda just wants to settle out and it doesn't really stick quite as hard. But if you're putting on a little bit of a clear base coat, it's giving it a little bit of a texture. So when the drops come down, it gives it a something a little more firm to grab onto rather than a slick surface of 600 grit sanded clear coat. So hopefully that makes sense. This makes a big difference on how it turns out. Like I said earlier, I forgot to do this and I had had to redo it just because I forgot this one step. Uh, it You don't have to do it, but it it always turns out better every time I do this. So this is one trick you definitely don't want to forget. And if you're going to do it, do this, just do it because it's it's worth it. So you can't really see it going on because it is clear. But like I said, we're just giving it, giving the surface someone asked how something long, to stick to. Someone asked, how long after spraying candy do you peel your tape? Mine always takes to paint up with it. Okay, so you should be able to pull, if you're spraying your candy down with an airbrush, which most of the time you should be, um, you literally you can pull it off like a minute or two after you get done spraying if if you're having a problem with it being too wet after that after like five minutes or ten minutes you sprayed it on way too wet so you may want to address that problem because literally like okay this is clear base coat this is going to act really similar to what candy would act like because this actually has one of the components that the candy has in it but I mean, it's already dry. I mean, I can touch that. 
it's already dry. That's a, that's the nice thing about base coats. Base coats aren't clear coats. They they dry fast. They the the solvents evaporate fast, and then they're dry. I mean, they're not chemically hardened. I mean, you can, I mean, a drop of lacquer thinner will take that right off. But uh, hopefully that helps. Okay, so we have that layered in the clear base. So that's going to give the water something to stick to. Hey, man. J-Mo sent you 20 bucks so he can't stay on there. J-Mo? Again? Oh, man. Yeah, they're hooking it up. I love it, guys. I love it. Let's keep it going. A um, couple other questions. So someone said, when doing wild colors, what airbrush colors are you more fond of, or do you normally just stick to regular auto paint? I mostly stick to auto paint. Um, I like using candy colors because anything that has a transparent candy, candies are transparent. When you lay them over the whatever's underneath them, you know, whether it's a white base coat, whether it's crushed glass like this case, um, it just dies. It, it just dies the top, um, leaving, you know, leaving the rest, leaving it transparent. You're able to see the sparkle and you're able to see the details still. As you know, I, I spray most of my stuff with an airbrush, so um, I can do, you know, but I like, I mostly use candies. I guess that's the answer to that question is I mostly use candies. Sometimes I'll, if I'm doing uh, 80s, 90s graphics, I'll move into some fluorescence, um, which would be water-based, create a text line and stuff like that. It all depends on what I'm working on, but I prefer to stay in the candies and the metal flakes because I feel like these jobs look like a million dollars when they're all finished. Someone asked what airbrush are you using? I'm using a Wada Eclipse HPCS 1.35 needle. You can, you should probably get in the 1.5, 1 1.0. I'm sorry, 0 0.05 needle if you're brand new to airbrushing because it's going to clog less, um, and that's pretty much that's why a lot of people quit because they just can't get it to spray right. As if some of you guys have an airbrush and uh, given up because you know, maybe it clogs too much, or you just can't get the mixture right, or something like that. Um, you know, clean it out, try again. So I'm moving on because we need to keep going. Uh, you see, I'm just kind of like not doing full blast here. I'm just kind of just uh, putting the drops out, just like that. I mean, kind of how I did the other side. Nothing too crazy. Mixing up some smaller drops and some bigger ones. I would take that um, I would take it all the way out best way to do it is just put a piece of 80 grit and you can sand it out with 80 grit and then maybe a little bit of primer surfacer and spot prime it in that area if the rest of the paint's good that's how I would do it so yeah spot prime that area that you 80 gritted that sticker out that's going to protect the metal and that's also going to cover up the scratches. Once you spot prime that, sand it, and you're ready to go with your base coat. Lacquer thinner does not mess with your things in order to erase and redo an area. I thought it would melt it. Yeah, so I use lacquer thinner to erase a lot. And but the the key is is it needs to be clear coated with regular clear coat. If you're going to do that, if you're clear coating, it's a two part mixture, part A, part B mixing together. It makes a hardened surface that's should be resistant to lacquer thinner and other chemicals like gas and stuff like that. And then someone said, you said, you said you use 10 coats of clear to bury the glass flake. Would you sand between coats? Yes, so that was sanded in between. So uh, I laid down the glass with clear coat, added, I think, what, three coats? We did about three coats on this one. After that, sanded that down, um, and then did the graphics on it to this point, and then it was clear coated with another four coats, sanded down. So, And then if you were to add the coats of what was actually carrying the glass, I'd say about 10 coats. 
Okay, so this is the over-reduced black. This, this is the black that we mixed a little bit of the clear base coat with it, so it's not so black. So we want to keep in mind, so this is the top of the fender. You're looking at it kind of at a different angle, but this is the top of the fender. It wraps around like that. This is the front. So we're going to want the shadows to be down below. So we're going to be hitting it at this angle right here. We're painting up on top and over the paint droplets. So we're actually going to build up over the top. And once that evaporates, it the water will evaporate and it kind of lays down. The key is you don't want to spray too much paint, but you want to spray enough paint that you can tell that there's water droplets there. So it's kind of a fine line. If you spray too much paint, it'll end up, um, by the time it evaporates, it ends up like cracking and then you can't even wipe it without it like flaking off because you just got too much caked on top of the water bubbles. But uh, if you have, if you find that sweet spot, which is just perfect, um, it's gonna lay out flat. So once it evaporates, it's just gonna lay out and look exactly like it, it never left. The water droplet never left. It's just going to kind of, it's going to flatten out, but it's still going to leave the same look of um, the shadows. And we're also going to put some highlights on there as well. But let me get started here. So I'm running at about uh, 18 to 19 PSI right now. So I'm going to have to turn that down because if not, that's just going to blow these everywhere. So one of the things, if you're, if you're going to try to do this on a rounded surface, like a top of a tank, uh, you're going to have a little bit harder of a time. Like I said, just lay down that clear base coat you know, some of them will lay on their side, but you can see right now just by the little bit of a shake that these are starting to move. Um, once the, once there is more uh, paint layered on top of those bubbles, it will kind of harden them up a little bit. So they'll stay put. But once again, you want to make sure you don't bump anything and you don't want to make sure you're blowing, um, blowing any of these bubbles around. You want to keep everything still until the water completely evaporates. All right. So I think we're ready. We're not ready. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. We're going to turn this down to. Someone asked, can you get away with painting small sections of a car without a paint booth? I'm going to turn this down to eight PSI. Yeah. So yeah, you could paint a car. I painted a whole car in the garage. Remember that? <laughs> I painted a couple cars in our garage back in the days. That's where we started. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, of course you can. You can paint a whole car, like I said. I mean, if you live in an car, apartment complex or a town home or something, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you can't do that. But most people, you just paint it right out of your garage, especially if you're doing motorcycle parts. It's easy. Wet down the floor, lay some visqueen over your stuff that you don't want to overspray on and get to it. All right. So, like I said, there's a sweet spot. We don't want to lay too much paint. We want to lay just enough, and we're going to spray at this shadowed area because the sunlight's coming on the top so we're pretty much going to mimic what the sun would do if it hit this bubble um we're going to shadow down below so everything so all the paint's going to be dark paint's going to be coming in this way and then we'll highlight it with all the lighter paint coming in this other direction I'm just going real slow because you can always add more paint. You just really can't take it back once it's on there. I'm going to ask, what airbrush is best of the best for overall use? And then do you use one for everything or different ones for different applications? I use this airbrush for everything. Um, once you get, once you really get the hang of it, you can find that pretty much you can make any airbrush work. Some are better than the others. I really like my Micron. Um, I don't use it anymore because it broke down because I've had it for so long and I used it so much and it was too, it's just too expensive to rebuild. I think it's like a $500 airbrush or something. And then it costs like 350 to get the new stuff. I was like, what the hell I can buy? I mean, I can buy an Eclipse, which is this for, I think like 180 or something. 
And then you can buy the version above this, which is the performance version that has the little Mac valve right here. That's nice if you're doing uh, neural work or anything like that. We'll probably do some lives um, about doing some uh, some more murals and stuff like that. Let me know if you want it, if you uh, would like to see more of that. But um, I use this for everything, really do. And someone said, have you used the LimeLine gun to paint base and clear? Yes, I use that LimeLine 1.3 gun for everything. I haven't used it for my primer. I just reduced my primer out a little more. Makes it easier to sand anyways. And someone's saying, so you paint towards the sun? Yes, painting towards the sun. So the sun's coming this way. It's going to, I mean, realistically, the sun's going to pass through the bubble and there's going to be a little bit of a highlight on the bottom if you want to be technical. But uh, we're just trying to trick the eye and make these things look real. So we're going uh, to just shadow the bottom, the bottom half. So the sun's going to come in, brighten the top of those, those uh, water droplets, and then everything will be shadowed on that side. But yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll hit this with, uh, with a little bit of a highlight here in just a second, because I think we're just about ready. Someone said, can you do a candy or over ground metal in the future? Uh, yeah, I could probably do that. We would have to see how one of those panels ground out. But, uh, sure. Someone's asking what compressor, what compressor you're using so I'm using the Iwata Studio compressor, the airbrush compressor right now. And I use that pretty much any time I run the airbrush. I used to actually run it uh, to my main line, and you can do that too, your shop line. Um, you just reduce, you just uh, obviously put a regulator in it. You don't blow <laughs> you know, 50 PSI through this thing. Okay, I'm just going to overall kind of skim it now because I do want to darken the surface just a little bit more. Take a peek at that. I think we're good. Maybe a little bit more up, down, and through there. Okay, we're gonna add. We're gonna click it back over to this mixing table. Mm -hmm. I should have had all this mixed, and I didn't. It's better to have all your paint mixed, but. So I am gonna highlight this. You can either use a really light white. Um, or in this case, I'm just gonna use a little bit of Tamco silver base coat. And that's just gonna give a little bit of a glimmer to the top of those bubbles to make it look like it has a highlight. I thought about doing a little bit of over reduced white, but I felt like that was just a little too prominent and it also on, I would do it on any other color but flake so pretty much I'm gonna use mini flake on top of this glass to give it a little bit of a, a highlight you're not really gonna see a lot of it um, somebody asked um, can you heat gun the water drops yeah and we're gonna do that we're gonna heat gun those All right, let's switch it back over here. Chris said, do you have artistic training or just good genetics? <laughs> I don't think I have any. I have a lot of hard work is what I have, a lot of determination. And I used to watch YouTube videos of the olden days, Ed Hubs. I wonder what ever happened to him. I think there's a couple others. Can't remember all their names, but if you know them, shout them out. Some of the old, the old, uh, you know, Ed Hubs used to do the lightning strikes and the, I think, real fire and stuff like that. But learned a lot from him. I don't oh, see him much anymore. A couple things. Someone said, do you do the white at a different angle and direction? And then someone said, so is that area black now? Yeah, so right now, I am, this is the silver that I just barely loaded up in the airbrush that I mixed over there. So this is just a fine silver base coat. And before I was working this way with the shadows, I'm working the opposite way with the highlights. And I'm not putting a whole lot down. I'm just kind of just grazing past it. Really, the, the shadow um, is what's going to make 
the look. The highlights is just a little bit extra. But I think that's it. I mean, like I said, it doesn't take much of those highlights. We don't want to coat it too much because, for one, it takes forever for the water to evaporate. Uh, we'll be using the heat gun on it here in a minute. And the other thing is, is one, it'll just collapse wrong. So these, these bigger bubbles are going to collapse. Um, and if it looks like it, they're looking really good. Like I don't see, you'll start to see it maybe it kind of like a, like it looks like a little mini earthquake of the paint on top of it, which is okay. If it gets too big and too thick, once it's dry, it'll like flake right off. So if it does that, as long as you're clear coated in between, you can just wipe it off and do it again. Like I said, I think I did it twice on the other side because it's been so long since I've done this. I forgot a couple of things, so. But uh, there it is. That's how it's painted. I'm gonna go ahead and put a heat gun on it right right now, here in a second, and um, I have a couple we'll questions real quick. They just said, what's the normal pressure you run your airbrush at? And what PSI are you using? So right now I'm using around, um, what was that say eight to 10 PSI pretty low because I didn't want to disturb the bubbles. Now, right now, since it's painted, you can see that they're not even moving now because there's paint that kind of is like domed over it. So it's kind of stuck them in place, which also takes a little longer to, uh, for that to evaporate. But yes, uh, eight PSI right here, but usually it's going to be 18 to 20 or I'm 16 to 18 usually on an airbrush. And then Kyle said, he asked if you saw his paint job, and then I, you must have, because he said, thanks for checking out his paint job. And then... Yeah, I probably saw it. And then Fish said, shout out to me, the camera work. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I really try. And then John Kosmoski, they said, you're a painter. Oh, right? yeah. If we're talking a whole nother level. And then John said that he... Something he'd like to see was old school effects and square and rectangle shapes. Cool. All right. So I'm just using a regular heat gun. You could probably use, I mean, once there's paint on there, it's probably safe to use like a air dryer, a blow dryer too. Whatever works, it speeds up the process. I'm not gonna, this goes up to like a thousand degrees or something, 1100. Definitely don't want that going on. Probably like, I got leaf and stuff in here, so I gotta be super careful. So probably like 500 max. Michael Kennedy sent me $20. Well, I'm sorry, what was that? Michael Kennedy, sent me Michael Kennedy hooked it up. I recognize that name. I think he's been around since day one. Yeah, I recognize that name a lot. There's a few in here I recognize from doing a few of these. Um, someone else asked, what's the max coats on the drops you do? Do you recommend? Sorry. What's the max what? Drops? What is the max coat on the drops do you recommend? Oh. Uh, I kind of didn't do it in coats. I kind of just did it like building it up. So I would just do it to where um, it's dark enough, but you're not kicking it on like crazy. You know what I mean? So you just really have to pay attention to like how much is on there. So just enough, I guess. There is a window there. I mean, you can, yeah. another thing is once, once it's on there, once the drops are dry, it's either you can do some more drops maybe if it's not dark enough. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of the things you kind of have to practice, but I feel like you could still get it in the first shot if you really paid attention. Somebody said, you're using urethane based paint to this process also be used for lacquer based paint, maybe? Yeah, so great question. I probably should explain that. See, this method wouldn't work with any kind of a water based paint which obviously you're spraying it on water so that wouldn't work so the you're we're spraying a um an acrylic urethane base coat and uh so obviously it doesn't mix with the water so it just lays on top but yeah no water based this doesn't work with water based 
somebody, okay, Michael, um, he says, it was great having you as an instructor at Sanford Paperwork. He said, I appreciate all the information that you put out in the videos. He continues learning. He says, do you want to work with the beautiful one driving the tractor for our oh. oh, yeah, who's this? Oh, that's him? <laughs> How did I not put that together since then? Well, yep. Yeah, I remember. Absolutely. Painting in the truck. He was painting in the semi on his downtime. Yeah, I was there. I was with John with John Booth. Yep. All right. So we have a we have so I do have a video of this technique done on black base coat. It kind of shows me uh, lining out the fine line and doing a little bit of that. It is like a three minute and three and a half minute video. Uh, but it's going to give you a better idea of how these water droplets are done on top of a different base coat rather than the crushed glass or like this is or a metal flake. You know, it's obviously you're going you're gonna to do things a little bit different. On that video, I think I did use a white base coat if I remember right. But uh, we're going to go ahead and do a split screen here. And you'll be able to watch that while I just blow these water droplets.
And that's it guys, that's all it takes. All of the paint and the equipment that I use is conveniently available on my Amazon affiliate page. By clicking on my Amazon link down in the description, not only will you be directly supporting this channel, you can browse through all of the paint and the equipment that I use and recommend. Not to mention how much money you can save, it's really unbelievable. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We're still not quite all dried up here. Let me know if you had any questions on that. Yeah, there's a few. So, there's a couple. So, someone says, love the videos. Where can I get the Harley tank stencils? Uh, the Harley stencil, you can, if you remind me this, babe, I, we should put it down in the description since we're talking about it. The Harley Davidson Barn Shield stencil, you can get it at uh, the website. I'm trying to remember now. It's um, Brands of the World. You want to type that in the comments? Brandsoftheworld.com. And then you just type in Hardy Davidson. You'll find a whole bunch of different ones. And they're just vectors that you can cut out on your plotter. If you have a cricket, you can literally do just about anything. You can take a picture and just turn it into a stencil. It's pretty awesome. Um, I might do some tutorials on how to use that as well. I'm just still kind of new at it. But I, was, I moved from a regular plotter to a, a cricket plotter. It's the best thing ever. Someone, a couple more questions. Someone said, you always use the green Lime Lime tape. Other brand offers four colors and firmness. How do you feel about that? How does the Lime Lime compare, if you know, uh, Lime Lime? Uh, I kind of heard that question. Uh, it, so how does it compare? What was the question? How does the Lime Lime compare to other brands? Uh, it, it's, well, I mean... It's better, in my opinion. You know, it's a little bit thicker. Uh, it holds better around the corners. Um, literally, you can leave your tape lines down for two days and still come back, and they're still there. You know, they may have shrunk back a couple here and there, but um, put a couple layers of safety tape on the edges, and they'll, they'll stay put. Uh, no residue, like maybe you'll see that on some of the brands that are the blue-colored. They creep on you and can leave a little bit of a snail trail. This is not going to do that. The Lime Lime is not going to do that. It's the stuff I use every day. This is getting closer because we got all the little drops here. All the little drops have evaporated. The medium drops are just about gone. Some of the bigger ones are almost there. That probably would speed up the dry time. The thing is, I, I feel like it would uh, evaporate some of the small drops before you even had a chance to paint them. And then Maddie says, hi. Misty calling, so she's finally down alive. Misty and Maddie? Yep. And then... Someone said, hello from Brazil. Someone else said, there's a pickup that drives around my street that looks completely rusted. Found out it's a real paint job. Yeah, usually you can use like a candy root beer brown. You use a little bit of a texture stencil. You can make it look exactly like a rust. It's fun to do. And then someone said, would you do... Would you do white in one direction and a dark color in the other? So I did black, or I did uh, black that's been redu over reduced, and then I added a clear base coat to it to make it less potent. I did that in this direction, spraying this way on the drops, and then I used a silver base coat, giving it a little bit of a highlight. And then someone said, Would it be possible to do a second application of water droplets with different colors, like a galaxy of? Uh, you probably could do it a couple of times. I feel like once you added too many colors, it's just gonna like darken it up too much. But yeah, experiment. 
I mean, obviously you could if you, you maybe you could find a way. Cricket tutorial. Oh yeah, we just got it. So, um, yes, I will do a cricket tutorial. So I prefer it because it's the best clear that I've found so far that can can take uh, layering it over and over again. Um, it dries fast. I mean, literally, I can clear it the next day. So I'll I'll do some graphics. I'll clear it that night. The next day, I'll wake up, sand it, and start another layer of graphics, and then it'll go back into clear that next day. Some clears they they they'll trap solvents. Um, They'll do a lot of other funky stuff that, you know, because they're made to be high build, you know, they're, that's what everybody's looking for. You want high build. You want to do everything in one coat because that's the way painters do it. That's the way you make money. But you don't want that. You don't want to trap all that high build um, and all those solvents in between all these coats. The U-Pole is thin enough that um, it evaporates and it allows you to recoat over and over again. Now, when I... When I do final clear coat, I, you know, I'll use, uh, sometimes I'll use, if it's a personal project, I'll just stay with u -Pole. Uh, but I, right now I do like, uh, Tamico line, um, and I'll use, uh, some Sherwin Williams as well, just to finish it off with the final, uh, you know, three or four coats when I'm all finished. This is getting closer. Just a couple more. But it probably to you guys, does this look like it's still wet? Hopefully. Someone said that airbrush holes are to keep practice with watercolor paint from Dollar Tree. Can't get the hang of it. Paint goes all over any pointers. I'm sorry, say that one more time. Uh, it said that airbrush holes all keep practice with watercolor paint from the from Dollar Tree. Oh, okay, Can't yeah. Get the hang of it. Paint blows all over any yes, don't use that paint. <laughs> That's my point. Not all paint is meant is meant to be sprayed. Um, like I have some stuff. I won't name any names, but there's some stuff that's supposed to be airbrush paint, and I just can't not get it to spray uh, a smooth blend like this. You know, see how it's blended in and it looks nice and smooth, and everything everything blows out the small droplets. Um, some stuff just is not meant to separate when it sprays uh, a lot of it's like the um the craft store paint it's not going to work for you you got to use uh, automotive paint or you need to make use a waterborne paint like uh, wicked by Cretex or another line like that if you want to stay with waterborne Uh, I may be wrong. The Eclipse may only come in at 0.35. I don't know. You can search on Amazon and see if it comes in that. I know the Neo does, and it's a little bit cheaper. I think it's 90 bucks. Might be even cheaper than that. If, you, if the, the only thing you have, the only option is a 0.35, I mean, that's fine. I'm just saying a lot of people's problem is the fact that it gets, their airbrush gets clogged up because um, they're inexperienced with how much to reduce and stuff like that or how to fix it or maybe their airbrush is a little dirty or something like that but having the smaller nozzle um, is going to cause more clog ups and more clog ups means more frustration because it's just hard to deal with sometimes um but so that's what i'd say if you if you start with a 0 0.05 needle and nozzle in your airbrush probably do that because i, I feel like you just have an easier time but um who knows? That's me. And then someone said, do you suggest making your colors by mixing colors for different shades or buying colors individually? So how I'm mixing colors right now is I'll take a white base coat and then I'll mix a little bit of a candy color in it to make the color that I want. So yeah, I kind of mix them myself using candy as a toner. I've done that in some of my past videos too. 
And someone asked, is U pull a four to one? U pull is a four to one ratio. So yeah. And someone asked, do you wet sand between clear coats or wet on wet? Wet sand between clear coats once it dries. But hardly ever do I do wet on wet. And then someone's asked what the PSI should be. It's eight, right? When you're when you're doing the water droplets, just you want it up high enough to where it's not going to move your bubbles. Because you want enough pressure that it's going to spray out and atomize good and, and look right. But uh, yeah, I mean, as as high as you can have the pressure without moving the bubbles. So I would say around eight to ten. And then someone said. Would you think one of those Revo dryers would be good for what you're doing right now? A what kind of dryer? Revo or Revo, R E V O? Probably. Depends on how much air it's pushing out. But this is actually on, it looks like. Yeah, it is. And then Misty said that she got a two stage air compressor today. Oh, right on. I know she's been looking for one of those. But that should set that should set you up two stage. Um, well, I get that question asked a lot, actually. Um, what what compressor should I buy? Two stage is what it, you know usually my answer on that, and that should be good for any kind of painting with a paint gun or sanding with a DA orbital sander. And someone said, if I want to paint my eighteen SG, can I just scuff the clear? It's stock vivid black with no dents. Yes, yes. You can just, that's how you would do it. You would scuff down the clear. Um, it's probably 600 grit it. If you have any rock chips or anything like that, just uh, blend those out with some 600 grit. Scotch bright, red Scotch bright. And yeah, you're ready to go. Clean it up really good. Make sure you got wax and grease remover on there. But yeah, keep those factory primers, man. I mean, a lot of people think they got to start the paint job by stripping all the paint off. But if you have if you have factory Harley paint, I mean, you have primer on there that you can't, I can't, really nobody but the factories can replicate. So um, it's just too good. I mean, it's just too good of a primer. Uh, don't strip it off. You can just scuff it down and uh, start with your new paint. If someone said, Christopher said that, he, that your videos inspired him to paint his bike back in April and just ordered more paint to do it again this month. Thank God for Texas weather. <laughs> we got weather, good weather here in Utah, actually. No snow yet. Especially when you're painting in your garage, right? You always hope for good weather. Right. Because you're like, I can't, you can't really do paint like when it's like under 60 degrees. Good luck. Unless you're airbrushing, you're okay. But. And then someone said, how many clear coats when finished? Is there no difference from three times and five times? There's really not that big of a difference you can tell. Is, that, is, is he saying visually, I'm guessing? You're not going to be able to tell the difference between three coats and five coats. Uh, but it is going to smooth it out better and make it easier to, uh, to sand it and polish it. All right, that looks pretty dang good. It looks like the water droplets are still there, actually. I mean, it's all dried up now. It's 39 degrees in New York. How cold is it here? Warmer than normal. 38 here. <laughs> That's normal. Warmer than normal. So it takes Want a little bit more of a close-up? There we go. Close-up, yeah. Once it, once again, once this hits the once clear coat hits this, it really makes it pop. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and throw some lace really quick on this guy, on this panel. Let's get this up a little higher. Kind 
All right, we okay right there? All right. Once again, just gonna tape out just inside of that last silver pin stripe right there. And we can do this because we use black base coat when we edge this out. Someone says the video looks a little blurry. Hopefully that straightens out. Someone asked, is that a large metal car, model car on the ledge? No, that's actually a real car. <laughs> yeah, that, it's a, well, not quite half either. I think it's like one. It's full size. That's the full, that's the full car right there. But it is just a sliver of it. Okay, someone said, I spray PPG, you ever use them, and then is all I've ever sprayed, so I have no comparison. Yeah, I mean, PPG is going to be uh, really similar to what we're using here. I mean, you can, I, if I wanted to spend the money on PPG, uh, which is way overpriced, uh, in my opinion, because there's no reason to be paying that kind of money for, uh, I mean, you're paying a lot of it for paint match and stuff like that. We're not trying to match a paint to a collision job or to a fender or to a color code. So that gives us options to use paint that's less expensive, which you definitely want to do. And then Misty said, okay, question. Is there something a person can use to remove, to remove, <laughs> I'm not going to hurt, to remove, <laughs> to remove <sighs> humidity. <laughs> In a room. Oh, that was so interesting for me. Is there something that'll remove humidity? Yes. You said I don't know. I did. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think you'll have a problem. Wait a minute. She's in Idaho, right? Yeah. You ain't gonna have a problem. I mean, maybe to move. I've heard of people wanting to remove uh, moisture out of their airlines, but never out of the air. Maybe it causes some people problems. And never, here in Utah, it never caused me a problem. I've never even heard of having to do that. And someone said, let's see, you should paint metal folding chairs and sell them and let's see your little low rider chair. Yeah. Yeah, maybe there's a market for folding, custom painted folding chairs, is there? Mm -hmm. I mean, how much somebody he willing to pay for a folding chair? Christopher said he is doing, he says, doing my paint job on the back porch of my apartment. So. Right now? I know. That's awesome. <laughs> That's, what a great place to be painting, really. Just chilling out here, just chilling out back, having a beer, messing with some paint. It's a great life, really, it is. Someone thought you were getting dog hair off doing that earlier. <laughs> 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 it's actually our dog doesn't shed. <laughs> Golden beetle, no, no shedding. Um, let's see. Someone said I heard there's multitasking size flakes. What's easier to use? What was easier to use? Out of which? Out of which stuff? I heard there's different size flakes. What's easier to use? Uh, the easiest metal flake to use is the lime line for sure because it's sprayable rather than having to buy the extra equipment to, to blow it on dry. Uh, which that creates more texture and more work. Um, the lime line's the best. Uh, sprays on easier. It buries easier. It has, I mean, you could see that it has a ton of sparkle. Um, just because it's smaller flake doesn't necessarily mean it's not as sparkly. It's actually the exact opposite. Uh, but the, yeah, that's what I would, if, if you're going to go with anything else, go with like a 0.15 and smaller I don't think there's any reason to go 0 0.2, 0 0.025. That's huge. And it's just going to be, it's going to be a lot of work. I mean, you can do it. It's just going to be more clear coat to get that all to bury out. Someone said that he caught your video with the aluminum foil filigree template. And then he said that how big is that supposed to be? Because he ordered it and it was three inch by five inch. Three inch by five inch. It's. I don't know where is that template at. I was looking for it to show them too. 
yeah, I don't know where that ended up at, but uh. Someone asked, uh, why are you sticking the tape to your sweater? It's a five. It's a five by five. It's that big. It, if you're, it's the same one that I've been using. I only have one of them. They did say they said they'd order the off your link, Amazon link. Yeah, so it should it sh should be the same size I used. There is a couple of them on there that I noticed that people have ordered that may be smaller. That might be a different design, so check that out. Maybe, maybe you got one of the different ones. And someone wants to know really why you're sticking a tape to your sweater. Um, I'm just making it a little bit less tacky. To because I got leafing right here, and I really don't want it to mess with the the leaf. And it's just better to be safe than sorry. I'd rather just uh, get a little bit of the tack off of it, so when it sticks, it's not like super tacky. And then, let's see, Missy said that she bought one pack of the crushed glass and she wants to know, is that going to be enough to do a road team? Hmm. No, I don't think so. I think you would need two packs. Um, if she has a, if she has a uh, tour pack and stuff like that, maybe even three to be safe, but definitely two. And then someone said, what size of flake best adding to candid paint what what's the best flake to add to the candy what size for a flake for adding to candy paint uh usually you don't add the flake you don't add the flake right to the candy you would um you would spray it on beforehand like this but uh I'm trying to figure out how to answer that question. Um, you'd spray it beforehand. You don't actually don't spray it in the flake, but the size I would use is 0 0.004 and 0 0.008, which is what uh, the Limeline Metal Flake is. That already comes in the same packet. So the Limeline packet is what you're gonna wanna use and then the candy over the top. Tom says he's in Canada and he uses a wood burning stove, wet floor, trying to paint in the winter is crazy in Canada. I bet that would be hard. Yeah. But whatever works, you know, that's better than an oil burning stove. Wood burning is way better. You don't want that oil. You don't want those oil burning stoves around your paint. Someone asked, does the paint smell bad? Can I do this inside my house? Uh, you could, you could do, uh, Createx inside your house, but I wouldn't spray any clear coat or any base coat like we're using here. You can do it in your garage, but, uh, in your house, it's just, if you don't have a wife, <laughs> right? If, she, if nobody gives a shit except for you, hell yeah, you can do it in your house. It's not good for you. <laughs> I mean, if one of my wife, I'd probably... I probably have my motorcycle in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, that is true, huh? Look, now you got a big old shop. You don't need it in the kitchen. So I'm just kind of dusting this over evenly. This is the uh, the over reduced black base coat, and it has that clear base coat mixed in with it to make it a little less potent. Pull that up and take Travis a peek. It says his Indian scouts in his kitchen right now. Yeah. You must be single, Travis. Or your wife's cooler than I am. Mm. <laughs> All right. I sprayed that and uh, I didn't spray it dark enough. And there's no way I'm going to get that lace to lay out exactly in the same spot. So you're in luck because I screwed up and you're going to be able to see how I fix it. I'm just going to take a clean rag right here. You can either take some lacquer thinner or some medium reducer or any kind of reducer. And since this has been clear coated, I'm going to wipe away. Well, 
Okay, let's try that again. So on that round, I pulled it up and I kind of lost where it was at. Um, and really there's no way, I mean, maybe there's a way, but I can never get it lined up again exactly where it needs to be. And it looks funky. So I just wiped it off. We're gonna do it again. I do kind of want to line it up to where some of these, like I want that big flower in there for sure. Maybe halfway through. There we go. Okay, a couple questions. Someone said, odd question, how do you store your products? Um, can too much heat in the summer affect them? Yeah, too much heat could, I imagine, could affect it. Um, definitely too cold. You don't want to freeze your paint. You don't want to leave it in your garage if you don't have, like, a heater. You don't want to leave it on your concrete floor where it's all cold. So take care of it. Make sure it's somewhere where it's going to stay room temperature. And then someone said, how big is the shop? The shop is a 55 by 30. And then it's 22 feet tall. Two levels. Well, three levels, actually. And then someone said, do you use lace over and over? Yes. Yep one of those things you can just keep on using them. Travis said that his wife wasn't happy, but he still put the bike in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah. He showed me a picture. Is that Daryl? Travis Harper. Oh. Uh, Daryl Starling, he showed me a picture of his Christmas tree. And he had, like, freaking 10 Harleys in, in his living room. Over here, man. Okay, let's see. Someone says, what's the difference between medium reducer and fast reducer, and what's your preference? Um, so I'll use, I'll use fast reducer when it's colder because it, uh, it, it's, that's exactly what it is. It reduces and, and it uh, evaporates faster. And then in the summer, I use slow or medium, or I use whatever I have. Really, I mean, you just use whatever you have. But if you're going to buy something, buy it for the season that you're in and the temperature that you're going to be spraying in. So, I mean, if you don't really know, just buy medium. And Chris said, wow, answered his previous question with a demo. Maybe I didn't answer his question. Or maybe that was when you messed up. The demo? What was I doing? He just said, wow, answered my previous question with a demo. Thank you. Maybe that's when you messed up. Oh. And then someone said alcohol helps with oil base and doesn't hurt the paint. Alcohol? Yeah, I think the alcohol's okay. I'm just going to edge this. Give it a nice blend. All right, that's looking pretty good. Pull this tape off. We'll get a good look at this thing. Oh yeah, he said about erasing a mistake. Yeah, erasing the mistake, there it is. So as long as it's clear coated with 2K clear coat, and sanded and, and you're you're good just to to either you can either sand it off or you can wipe it off with lacquer thinner and it's nice because i use this technique a lot but you know obviously i, I clear in between my stages um but it gives you the opportunity to be able to experiment with new patterns say like like this like i i did this same exact thing on the other side earlier today and i redid it twice because couple of different reasons the first reason was because i forgot to put the clear base down and i wanted to make sure that both sides looked the same um so i redid it for that purpose and then the second time uh i put too much paint down and it ended up causing that same effect where um it just had it just was too much paint and it couldn't collapse the bubble um so i did redo it at that point too but yeah it allows you to be able to experiment and try new things that you're not 
you haven't done before without risking what you have done so far. It's like Photoshop. It's like adding the layer and being able to just hit clear and erase on that layer if you don't want it anymore. Someone said, if you're not using flake, would you tape over base coat or clear and sand first before designs? Yes. Always sand before you put the tape. Sand it and clean it. Remember that you always need, the paint always needs something to stick to. So somebody did mention earlier, do I do wet on wet applications? Well, the, what that means is, and if you don't know, a wet on wet application means that you've just got done spraying a product, say primer. I just got done spraying primer. Well, you have a couple of different options at that point. You, you would usually would let it dry. In my case, I would let it dry and then I would sand it and clean it and then go in the, in the booth and get sprayed with uh, the colored base coat, whatever, whatever color I'm starting with. Um, a wet on wet application is gonna be, say your primer in it, you're gonna let that primer flash off while it's in the booth and then you're gonna go straight to the base coat without letting it dry and uh, sanding it. Um, the, but you do have a window there. You can only recoat that within a certain time, which is usually, I don't know, an hour. I, I don't paint that way, but you'd have to follow the directions and usually it'll give you directions on a wet on wet application. So basically you'd wait like uh, 20 minutes or something for it to flash off and you would go straight to the base coat because that base coat is going to chemically adhere to the primer because the primer is still open and wet. So it kind of meshes the two together chemically. That's a wet on wet. If you were to spray the primer and you were planning on doing a wet on wet and somebody called and then you ended up talking on the phone for an hour and you came back and you sprayed your base coat, well, there's a good chance your base coat's not gonna stick anymore because it doesn't have that chemical bind anymore because the primer has set up too much. Um, so that, so you have a window there uh, and it's easier because you don't have to wait for it to, to dry and you don't have to sand it, but also, Remember, when you sand primer, you're also getting rid of defects and you're also smoothing it out to, and, and doing other things like that. So that's why I prefer to let it dry and then sand it and then let that next base coat attach to the scratch. Because like I said, you either have the chemical adhesion with wet on wet or you have the base coat that's going to attach to a scratch or a grit rather than that chemical adhesion. So hopefully that helps some of you guys. Um, if you're trying to put base coat right on top of clear coat that hasn't been sanded or anything like that, it's just going to come. It's just not going to stick because it's not gonna to stick to a smooth surface. It's not meant for that. Two ways it sticks, chemical or mechanical through some kind of a grit or a scratch that's in the surface prior. Someone asked, if you could show up a show a close up of the lace pattern, and then also they said, can you re, can you use reducer on inner coat to fix mistakes? Uh, what was the last one? Can you use it? In, reducer. In, yes. On, you can use reducer to wipe it off on inner coat to fix mistakes. Uh, no, no, you can't. No, it needs to be clear coated with two K clear coat in order for you to wipe anything off because the inner coat is just a base coat. It's going to wipe off with it. And then did you show up? Someone just wants to see a close up of the lace pattern. Yeah. And then someone asked, um, when you edge, do you stay more on the tape? Yes. When I, um, I definitely stay more on the tape. I stay on the tape and I let, I let it, uh, just kind of blend in to the center. And then someone else asked, is it possible to add a second effect one over top of each other or will that just get muddy? Um, if on top of that, you know, it kind of depends on what you're going to do. No, I wouldn't do any more of, um, I wouldn't do like another drop on that. No. Cause I feel like that would mud it up, especially when you're using a black base coat. You can do the same thing using a candy. Same thing I did. Can be completely different looking. You can use a blue candy. You could still use a blue candy over this. Someone asked, why don't you use paper mask? Or why don't you like to use paper mask? Um, paper mask? I do. I use it sometimes. 
I feel like I didn't nearly need to use it on this because I'm using an airbrush. But if I'm spraying with a gun, 100% uh, I'll mask everything up because you get a lot of overspray. And then someone said, I bought a, a quart of clear and a quart of my base coat. Would that be enough for a tank, fenders, and side covers for sportsters? Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, clear coat, you probably need a gallon of clear. I don't know if you said clear or not, but yeah, base coats, you're good at the court. That's going to cover you long, long past that. All right. So yeah, anybody else have any questions? Just get them in real quick. It says sprayable adhesive. Can you spray paint over it? Yes, it's for flake. Sprayable adhesive? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. I appreciate you guys being here. Got a few super chats i really appreciate that that really helps keep things going here so awesome thanks joseph phil everybody that was that's been on anybody that's been a part of this i really appreciate it uh we're going to try to come to you at least a couple of times a week with different stuff john said um looking good what colors would you use for water drop over yellow candy what colors would I use for water droplet over yellow candy? Yeah. Probably an, probably an orange, maybe orange candy, light orange, dark orange. I would practice on something. Someone says, when's the next live? You just answered that. Um, let's see. They're going too fast. I can't <laughs> move too quick. Let's see. Uh, Someone said airbrush pointers for beginner. Airbrush pointers for beginners. Uh, practice using your airbrush. And someone said, you ever done a video with a leopard print before? I would love to see that. Me too. I love leopard print. Yeah, leopard print. Haven't done it. I've done zebra print. Good job. Love the co content. Good stuff. How are you laying on that table without scratches? It has a rubber mat on it. And then I think this, uh, this is about the, maybe the yellow water drops. So we said, so two tones of orange. Mm. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, usually your candy would be done after your water droplets. Or if you're doing the candy in the water droplets, then uh, yeah, I would say practice on something and see how it looks. Uh, I would, I tell you something, and it might look like crap. So try it, and it, and if it looks bad, send me a picture, and I'll let you know maybe how to make it look good. Someone said my candy cobalt blue came out good watching you, and Annie's on. She said you're such a good teacher. Thanks, Annie. Someone said, great work. Shane, you're not in the UK. We could go there. Go to the UK? Yeah. It depends on what part of the UK. All right. Well, it looks like we're uh, getting finished up here. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you Thank next you. week. You answer right? for... He said, thanks to me. So I'm going to say, you're welcome, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being here. Bye, guys.